With that, he smoothed down my dress and gently picked me up as if I was fragile as glass, before carrying me out of his office and walking down the long hallway that led to my bedroom. The events of today had taken me on one hell of a roller coaster ride, leaving me in a bizarre state of confusion and want for more. 10. 11. Such a hypocrite the sun was, bathing this hell in its golden light as if something amazing just happened, when it in fact was the opposite. The bright sunny weather was the exact opposite of my current dark mood. I let out an irritable sigh and stomped away from where I'd been standing by the window, glaring at the cloudless sky above for the past few minutes. Nikolai had clearly been avoiding me for the past three days and I found it strange and even a little insulting. He hadn't even bothered to continue attempting to teach me to fight after that one lesson over a week ago. Early each morning I watched from the window of my room as he left in one of his many flashy cars, and then returned only at midday or early evening without bothering to say a word or even attempt to see me. I'd grown used to his constant attention and now suddenly having none of it coming my way left me incredibly confused and frustrated. I understood that he wanted to follow his plan and wait for us to have sex once we were married, but I didn't think that it would mean him forgetting about me altogether. I'd come to several conclusions since that day in his office. 1. There was absolutely no doubt that I desired Nikolai. 2. I wanted to have sex with him, even if I didn't like the person he was. We were going to be married after all, so why shouldn't I enjoy his body and let that try to make up for his terrible personality? 3. I needed to gain at least a little power over the man in order to keep my sanity. I had to get him under my control somehow. 4. In order to gain that control, I planned on using his desire for me against him the same way he'd used my hunger for his touch to make me submit to him so easily. 5. Once I had that control, I could make him bow if I wanted to. Nikolai was a strong man, but men became weak and easily manipulated when consumed with lust. I would pay him back with his own coins by showing little interest in him just as he'd been doing to me, while also subtly seducing him until he became filled with raw, fiery need. I would weasel my way into his mind and stay there, slowly eating away at what little sanity he had left. That way I could bring the king to his knees. I knew that he was the type of man that would stop at nothing to get what he wanted. This time however, that thing would be me and I would not give myself to him so easily again. Since it was late afternoon, Nikolai was due home any minute and it was the perfect time for me to put the first few steps of my plan into motion. All I needed was a cute outfit and an excuse to be outside in his direct line of sight when he arrived. A light bulb switched on inside my brain. Perfect. I hardly left my room but since it was a hot summer's day, I had an excuse to be out soaking up some much-needed sun. Nothing suspicious with that, I was allowed to freely roam the estate if I wanted to, as long as I didn't dare try to leave. A naughty smile spread across my face as I glanced at the mirror before grabbing a book, one of many that Nikolai sent over to my room to keep me entertained so that I wouldn't bother him, and practically skipped down the hallway that led to the estate gardens. I wore a short and slightly sheer white cotton sundress that left little to the imagination. My dark hair hung in loose waves down my back and my face was bare except for a dash of rouge and cherry lip balm. What do you want? I groaned when I saw Kasha, the fat grey beast emerge from a room and follow me as I walked. Sure he seemed pretty tame and harmless but it didn't mean I liked him. I hadn't forgotten how the creature woke me up by scaring the life out of me the other day. The cat's only response came in the form of a soft meow as he brushed up against my legs. Go away. I scowled down at him but he stubbornly refused to leave my side. Since I was left alone with only the many guards and maids when Nikolai was gone, I didn't have to worry about speaking to anyone and happily found a shady spot under a tree on the lawn, where I stretched out on my stomach and began reading the book. Kasha curled up in a nearby patch of sun and quickly fell asleep. To my surprise the words on the pages actually managed to claim my attention, so much so that I lost track of time and forgot the reason why I was there in the first place. I actually enjoyed being alone while surrounded by nature as I hardly got outside anymore. pre Naya. Beautiful, Nikolai's deep voice pulled me back to reality. There he stood, leaning against a tree while watching me with an awestruck expression on his face. 
He carried a large black axe in his one hand, and had his shirt sleeves rolled up halfway to reveal his muscular forearms. I didn't fail to notice the way his gaze lingered on my exposed legs. How long have you been standing there? The corner of my mouth tilted up slightly. A while, was his only response. Why have you got an axe? I asked warily. Work. He shrugged nonchalantly. It's my preferred weapon. Wow. I shook my head with a small laugh. That's quite unusual. It's probably why I'm good with it. My targets never expect me to fight with an axe. It is uncommon, he explained, but I've preferred to use this since I was a boy. Axes are heavy, I stated. Don't you get tired when you're fighting? Since I am a very large man, a bigger weapon suits me well. I can use others just fine but this one just feels right. The Russian man tossed the axe up into the air and then expertly caught it again by the hilt. Show off. What do you think I will use, you know, when I learn to fight? I rolled over onto my back and gazed up at him as he approached me. Knives. They are tiny and so are you. That should work well, he answered without skipping a beat. Or perhaps I could get a smaller, much lighter axe made and see how you like it. What about guns? I asked. Anyone can shoot a gun, but real talent is knowing how to fight without one. He replied, in my line of work you'll often find yourself in situations where you must be quick and silent. Guns, even with a silencer draw too much attention, makes sense. I nodded, I see the two of you are getting along now, Nikolai remarked as Kasha came over to him. I'm tolerating him. I rolled my eyes as the beast began purring after being picked up picked up. He won't leave me alone. He likes you. He marveled. It's strange because he hates almost everyone aside from me. Just like his dad, I said. He is a sensible animal, stated Nikolai. Doesn't trust easily. He's. All right I guess. I couldn't find any other way to describe him. About the other day, he spoke after a few moments of awkward silence. My still bruised ass hurt at the mere thought of what had happened then while I felt heat immediately rush to the area between my thighs. Yes? Our eyes met. I've decided that you and I should get to know each other better and we should spend more time together. He casually ran a thumb over the dangerously sharp blade of his axe as he spoke. Aside from the fact that we are physically attracted to one another, you and I do not get along very well. I want to fuck you, yes, but I also want to know how to keep you happy in ways other than sex. We will be married after all and you'll be the mother of my children. I don't want you to be miserable because then I will be miserable too. That's how marriage works, unfortunately. Why have you been avoiding me? I was unable to hold my words back, because every time I see you I have hard time not bending you over the nearest surface and fucking you until you lose your voice from screaming. He shrugged. There is something about you that other women don't have and I like it. That is why you are going to be my wife. I just need to follow the plan first and then everything will go well. If you have such a difficult time restraining yourself then why do you want us to spend more time together? I sent him an odd look. I like a challenge. He shot me a grin. Waiting will only make it better when I can finally have you. Who says I'm going to let you have me though? I sassed him. You, princessa. He smirked. I know you hate me but your body definitely doesn't. That's twice that I've made you come now and it's really not that difficult to get you under my control. You virgins get wet so easily. Sex is different. I huffed. It's more personal and I've never. You've never had a cock inside of you? Humor danced in his eyes. That will soon change. Less than two weeks to go before I spend every breathing moment fucking you until I am certain that you are carrying my child. Here you go again with that talk about getting me pregnant. I pinched the bridge of my nose. The topic made my head hurt. Why on earth would you think I'd ever have sex with you then? Desire makes people forget all rationality. We become the animals we truly are deep down inside, driven only by instinct. He explained. And besides, sex or no sex, I'm getting you pregnant. It's why you're here after all, but you might as well get some pleasure out of this arrangement. I let you touch me but I don't trust you enough to do anything else. I lied. I don't want to fuck you and I definitely don't want your demonic little sperms pillaging and plundering my uterus, 
looking for an egg to ruin, who says they aren't already doing just that? He spoke cruelly. H. How? My heart began to race. That's not possible. I had my fingers inside of you more than once, and it was a perfect time for you to be artificially inseminated without even noticing. Your mind was so clouded over with pleasure that I could have done anything to you in that moment and you wouldn't have noticed a thing. His expression grew dark and malicious, and I knew he was happy about the panic he was inflicting upon me. Tell me you didn't, I demanded, my voice shaking. Surely you're not evil enough for that. Well sweet Rosalie, it looks like you'll only discover the answer to that in a few months' time. He ran a hand through his dark curls as he watched me tremble from rage and horror. You may or may not be pregnant already, who knows? Perhaps I'm just scaring you? Perhaps not. I seldom jest. I hope you trip and fall onto that axe, then slowly bleed to death cold and alone. I hissed before standing up and tugging down the hem my dress, rage dripping out of every pore. You're coming to work with me tomorrow, Kroshka. Little one, I want you by my side from now on so you can learn how things go about around here. He dictated as if nothing happened, and reached a hand up to caress my face. Be ready by 10 a.m., choke on a dick. I slapped his approaching hand, before angrily stomping away from him. Nikolai didn't do anything without carefully planning it out, so surely he wouldn't go and get me pregnant before the time? It was highly likely that he was just using this as an opportunity to terrorize me for his own sick pleasure. I already knew how upset changing plans made him and I doubted that he would do so now. But what if he did? 11. 12. I was lucky if I managed to get more than three hours of sleep. I'd spent the entire night tossing and turning with a racing heart, consumed with anxiety. After bursting into tears more than once, I realized that I had to accept my situation and deal with it. That turned out to be an extremely difficult thing to do. What if I was pregnant? I sure as hell felt sick to my stomach already, but it was probably from the stress. Despite having pale, sallow skin and dark shadows under my eyes, I didn't bother doing much makeup. I was visibly exhausted and really, really unhappy. Nikolai was coming to fetch me any moment to take me to work with him today and I was pretty sure that the things I'd witnessed there would scar me for life. My appearance made me look young, unbothered and slightly ill even, which is exactly what I was. I didn't bother with a particularly fancy outfit to impress anyone and just slipped on a simple pair of shorts and crop top. A knock cut through the silence of the room just as I began to doze off at my seat by the window. Rough night smirked Nikolai when I opened the door with a heavy sigh. What do you think? I glared at him. You look like you haven't slept properly in months. He replied, because I haven't. I shrugged. That makes two of us, he muttered before wrapping an arm around my waist and pulling me to his side. Now we've got a busy day ahead of us Rosalie, so you need to wake up. What do you even do at work? Do you sit in an office all day calculating profits and things like that? Do you stand over a pot cooking meth? Do you impregnate people for fun? I grumbled. For me, work is either negotiating business deals and establishing new trade routes, going to check up on things at my brothels, nightclubs and warehouses or getting my hands dirty and eliminating my enemies. I used to be a mercenary for a few years before I took control of the family so I prefer the latter. I have people to do everything else, he explained. I want to show you how things work around here so you will stop being scared of everything. We'll start small, with just an interrogation for now. An interrogation? I mused. It makes you sound like a detective. It basically means that I'm going to torture any information I can get out of a traitor before killing him. The one I'm dealing with today tried to sabotage a huge shipment of cocaine by sending it to China instead of Afghanistan and claimed that the ship went down in a storm greedy little bastard he is, and wanted the money all for himself, although I suspect that he's working for an enemy of mine. This loss hasn't affected my business in any way but I'm still going to make an example out of him. His words were slow and well thought out.